Well, in a few short days, several of us are going to be heading over to the Holy Land, and in a little less than two weeks, we'll be in Bethlehem. And in Bethlehem, we'll be visiting the Church of the Nativity, which is built over the spot uh, that tradition has labeled as the birthplace of Jesus. And um, as they'll learn when we get there, and, I, and they have to listen to my lectures, uh, we don't know where Jesus was born, but this is the traditional place, and it goes back as far as we can can go in history to, to identify a, a place. And anyway, the church has been built over that. And underneath that church, uh, God willing, we'll be able to get down underneath and go into the caves down below. And uh, there are several caves there, and they're all dedicated to different events in Scripture. I mean, one of the caves is, has a little altar in it, and it's the cave dedicated to the Holy Innocents. The Holy Innocents is the name given to the children who in Bethlehem we're told in the Gospel of Matthew, were killed by Herod the Great. All of, we can assume boys, they wouldn't have bothered with the girls, but all boys, two years of age and younger. Which probably wasn't a whole lot because Bethlehem wasn't a very big town at that time. Um, so we don't know how many, but it's kind of a gruesome end to the Christmas story. We, we go through the story about the shepherds and the shepherds come and visit Jesus. And then the wise would come and they come and visit Jesus. And we, you know, on Christmas Eve, we saw, and it's all a good warm story. And, and then we don't usually tell the rest of the story because it gets pretty bleak. It gets pretty dark. We, we, we can't get any darker than, than the murder of little babies. Well, the Christmas story ends in darkness, as does Christmas quite often in our lives. Christmas is a great celebration, and we love Christmas, and we, we love the build-up to Christmas, but then there's one thing about Christmas that always disappoints us, and that is it's over. Now, traditionally, it's not over yet. We're still in the 12 days of Christmas, and those will continue on now through next Sunday. But in most of our homes, because of the way culture the world around us has, has begun to um, change Christmas. All the celebration comes before the 25th, and after the 25th, we pretty much have it wrapped up. The gifts are all open, uh, the celebrations have occurred, and, and now we face the future. And what do we face, oftentimes at this time of the year? Unfulfilled expectations. We had all kinds of hopes and dreams of what Christmas might be this year, but Maybe things didn't work out quite the way we thought they would. Somebody got sick. Somebody didn't make it because of the weather. Or, and this happens even to us adults, we didn't get the present we wanted. There might be many reasons why Christmas has been a disappointment. We had all the expectations. And Christmas, instead of being filled with joy at the end, is filled with depression. And Okay, now what? Now where do we go? Back to work. Back to school. Back to winter. And boy, we're back to winter again, aren't we? It's been an amazing December. They say that we've almost set a record for the number of days we got a measurable snowfall. The number of days when the temperature didn't get above zero, it's just been a, a horrible winter already, and yet, and I hate to break this to you, and I especially hate to break this to you, uh, on behalf of the seven of us who will be leaving next Friday, and it's in the 60s over there in some places in the Middle East, um, but you've got a couple more months of this to go. You know? <sighs> Boy, talk about depressing. But you know something? Christmas can't last forever. Not that high that we were on, and that beautiful services, the services that we had Christmas Eve. Um, that doesn't last forever. And while we kind of pause, we pull back to just really enjoy that, that time of the year and that celebration for those few days and weeks that we celebrate Christmas, it's now time to get back to work. To get back to the work of the kingdom. And the work of the kingdom is not all joy. It can be filled with a lot of bleakness. I, you know, I hate to show you a video like that today of the children in this world that are starving right now. But that's a fact. There's a lot of ugliness in this world, and, and, and the joy of Christmas cannot cover up that ugliness. And it's now time to get back and face the ugliness of this world as the people of God by putting our shoulders to the plow, to the stone, and pushing and getting back to work, the work of the kingdom. 
In the midst of winter, in the midst of everything else that goes on around us, God has called us in the midst of the bleakness of this world at times to be his light. And while the tree may come down and the lights may be taken down, the light of Christ needs to continue to shine. And the real message of Christmas isn't that we're supposed to stay on top of the mountain in the midst of the joy, but it's time to get back down in the valley and start doing the work of the kingdom. Again, to get busy, to be the church, to be the people that God has called us to be. And it may not be easy. It may not be joyful. Although there can be joy even in the midst of, of the work of the kingdom. But it's work that needs to be done. So as a congregation, as a church, as a people of God, as we enter a new year, we need to be busy about the work that God has placed before us. Whatever it may be, individually or corporately as a church or as a community, it's time to get back to work. The party's over. The work has begun. Let's get busy. Lord, we thank you for this celebration of Christmas. We celebrate the joy of Christmas, Lord. The joy of the children, the presents, the, the decorations, and the food. And, and Lord, we're sad in, in one's respect to see it go. But on the other hand, Lord, we know that the joy of Christmas that we felt needs to give way to the rest of the year now and to the work that's set before us. So help us, Lord, to be faithful and to do the work that you have placed in front of us. Help us, Lord, to be faithful in, in serving you, in being the light that you have placed in our midst in the person of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord God, that you would just uh, bless the Smith family at the time of the loss of, of their mother and the funeral yesterday, Lord. We pray that you be with the Reef family, for John and his family as they prepare for the memorial service for Deanna. It's a reminder that even in the midst of the light of Christmas, there is sadness around us, and yet joy in the midst of the sadness. We pray for those who are ill and in need of healing. We pray for those who are hungry. And we pray, Lord, that many in our community would step forth to answer the call to do something about that hunger. We pray for those in our nursing home Pray that they might be touched by your light and by our opportunity to minister to them this coming Tuesday. We pray for those who will be heading off to the Holy Land this Friday. We pray for a blessed trip. We pray for their health. And we just pray, Lord, that all would go according to plan and that uh, they would be able to truly enjoy the blessings of, of what is truly a holy land. And we pray for all others, Lord, in our congregation. We pray that you be with them and bless each one at the point of their need and their joy. For we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we invite the ushers to come.